So I applied for the loan myself on my own. Denied. Denied. Nope, not going to happen. The reason why this the value add deals are so important, especially when you're just starting out, is because I can recoup my money. If you have found yourself a good deal, do whatever it takes to make it happen. Yeah. Welcome back to the Sky's Limit podcast with your hosts, Mike and Ryan. I am Ryan, and today we're going to be talking about something very important, making that leap from owning one property to two to three and possibly more. Mike, how's it going? What's up, Ryan? Let's get into today's uh, episode, um, how to kind of scale your portfolio from going from, you know, you bought that first property, whether you bought it with an FHA loan, low down loan, conventional, maybe you don't even live in it at all. And so... Getting that first one under your belt, it's very exciting. Um, but then a lot of people kind of struggle to, to scale, if you want to scale, to scale from there. And I think that's that's one of the hardest things to to figure out how to do there. I mean, there's so many different, you know, ways to, ways to do it. Um, you could, you know, you got that first property and may, you now you need to save up 25% uh, for your next property because you're, you're probably not going to live in it. And so getting a conventional loan is probably the, path of least resistance and um that takes a while to save up for so what are some ways you think the listeners can you know take away from and and learn how to how to afford that next property good question which makes me think that you're really gonna laugh at how i bought my second one okay you're gonna get a kick out of it what well let's let's dig into it i'm gonna get dig into my property my second property i took out a hundred thousand dollar unsecured loan Hundred grand. How did anyone give that to you? So I applied for the loan myself on my own. Denied. Denied. Nope, not going to happen. I ended up getting hooked up with these people, and they were like, "Okay, we hear you that you got denied. Like that's too bad. We can position this loan and your information to these people again, and we will get it approved." Yeah, they're like, well, you know, it really depends how you position the loan to these to these lenders. Like you really have to like put the whole package together and like that's what you're paying us to do. So I'm like, look, I gave them my pay stubs. I told them how much I make. They were like, yeah, we'll position it in such a way that you will get approved. And they did that. No shit. They literally took my information, put it in like a very clean package, submitted submitted the information to them again. Uh-huh. I'm the same person, same yeah. social, same everything. Still poor. <laughs> and they gave me they gave me the loan. That's wild. It's insane. So then you got $100,000 in your bank account. At 10%. You're paying interest at 10%. Correct. Okay. And you, it's a loan, so you're paying it's it back so I'm like right next away. month. Like you're starting Correct. principal So I need to buy something. Yep. ASAP. How many, do you remember how long they amortized that loan over? Like how many years? Uh, I believe it was five years. Okay, so, so it's, it's, a a pretty, decent yeah, it's a pretty hefty payment. It's a good payment. Yeah. At 10%, it's a good payment. So that's like buying a $100,000 car. I'll be like, you're not getting a 10% rate, hopefully, when you're buying a car. Maybe maybe Joey down the street, but, you know, that's that's a, you yeah. know, that's a thousand, probably $1, thousand. $1,600. Yeah, okay. It's 1600 bucks. Yeah. It's like, I need to like deploy that so that I could get rental income to like offset that expense. Sure. Okay, so you got the $100,000 loan. You're paying sixteen hundred bucks a month, and now you're still living in that two family. Now mm-hmm. what? I found a property I want to buy. Okay. So the college I went to, Central Connecticut State University, which is in New Britain, which is in the same town that we both had those duplexes right. in. I found a property off market, and they were willing to do it owner finance. Owner finance was literally like a foreign language. I was like, owner what? Like what was this? Uh, made no sense to me, and. Looking back at the numbers, I have no idea why I did this deal, but it ended up working out. So two family in New Britain, I bought it for two fifty five. dollars That was unheard of. Yeah, that's high. Five years ago. I mean, that's kind of what they're going for now. A little bit more now, but like that's So it that's was high. like, it was a very big property. Very big. Very big property. And it was like right next to CCSU, right. which was helps its value. But still, I was way top end. Way top end. Like- Yeah, it makes me kind of cringe. But seller finance, they want it 25% down. So what a normal bank would charge you anyways. Yeah. 
charge you what the down payment would have to be. Right. But in my mind, I was like, I want to skip the whole bank thing. Like I'm so, I just don't even want to go Yeah, you might not road. even get approved. Exactly. Got and it. I want this property. So 25% down of like 255 is basically 63,000. Call it 60 just for round numbers. I've got this hundred grand mm -hmm. kicking around, right? I feel like a baller. So I'm like, yeah, I'll stroke you a check for 60. No problem. So I got 40 left over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, let me just backtrack on that real quick because remember they were charging me a fee, right? Whatever money they got me, they took 10% of. Oh, this company. Yeah. So like they got uh, me this hundred thousand dollar loan. Yeah. It's, it's always, there's always a catch. Always something. So I just stroked them a check for 10 grand. So now, so now you have, you're 90. working with 90. Okay. I got gotcha. you. So I need to get into this property with 60, right? Yep. Is more or less a down Plus payment. Plus closing costs. Right. It was okay. Like it was in decent shape. I definitely over improved it. And like, I didn't really have a ton of money. And so like hundred minus $10,000 fee, we're at 90. $60,000 down payment, 10 in closing. You know, that's, so we're, we're into the property at, at 70. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got like 20 grand kicking around more or less after all is said and done. And I blew that so fast. You have no idea. I got siding, roof, painted the interior. So I was well above and beyond that number. Okay. Right. But I was, I had been saving money, right. Cause I have no mortgage. I've got I've got my um my duplex in New Britain that I'm living out of. Like I'm doing okay. Mm -hmm. But this at the time made sense to me. This is where it gets really good. Okay. Remember, I'm doing rent by the room, right? right. I'm doing rent by the room at the place. That's your that business I'm, model. Correct. Right? Yep. This place has 10 bedrooms. Between two it like, was three, actually like five bedrooms a unit? It was three floors. Holy shit, that the is a big first floor house. was a normal looking floor. It had three bedrooms. Okay. The second floor had three bedrooms. The f the attic, the third floor was built out into four bedrooms and a bathroom. Jesus. I've got 10 beds. I'm renting out to college kids at least $500 a month. So five grand Well, gross. that business model makes a lot of sense. Right. So that's why I was like, okay, if I'm making at least five grand a month, like I know I can support it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So- I mean, that's pretty. So how did you pay back that loan? So- You don't still have that property today, right? I did sell it. You did sell it, okay, yeah. Yeah. The loan and the seller finance. So the seller finance was about $1,900 a month. The loan was about 1600 So that's, we're all in like 3,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm making five grand, at least. I was probably charging a little more than 500 bucks each. So like, it's making sense so far. I did a refinance. You did a cash out refinance or just like a rate in term? I did a cash out refinance. Okay. It appraised at 270. 75% of 270 is 202. Call it 200. Mm -hmm. My balance to the person who was holding the note was 190 Whew. after closing costs that's gone yeah but i still have this hundred thousand dollar note like it's still there like i have not paid it off right because i still owed them 190 so like 200 minus say 10 in closing minus 190 to the seller finance holder it's gone that that loan's gone Jeez. The cash, the cash out, quote unquote, funds are gone. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm just gonna sort of pay this off over time, I guess. Right? I refinance into like a five percent some odd rate. My new, my new payment is like two thousand dollars a month. I'm making, I'm doing okay. Like I can more than afford this like sixteen hundred dollar payment, but like it's just still there, still yeah. there, still yeah. there. So. Long story short, when I finally sold the property for three hundred ten thousand. Okay, so you did all right. On yeah, that. yeah. Years later, I was able to pay it off, and right off. But you were paying that that loan off. I mean, you were paying that loan for a while. I was paying the loan for. You a needed while. to rent by the room to afford that. Oh yeah. Because a normal two family, in New Britain, Connecticut, Hartford County, let's say, if it's three bedrooms a unit would probably rent for like 1500 so that's $3,000. So I was making way more. Yeah. 
But it, it's way more management intensive and you were personally managing it, correct? Oh yeah. I mean, I was living down the street. So like yeah. I was going there and mowing the lawn. I yeah. was, cl- do you know what it looks like to have 10 bedrooms rented by college kids? Like, I can only imagine. Do you know what imagine. like the trash I mean, I lived like? in one, but I can never man- imagine owning one. The flies that would accumulate on trash that was just sitting in the kitchen because they were too lazy to go downstairs and take it out was unreal that's i mean you're it's all risk reward you're being compensated through cash flow correct for the amount of risk and management intensive you're 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 consuming in this property 100 percent. right i mean think about a triple net lease where the return so the cap rate you'd say is you know depending on where it is is like five six seven percent i mean your return is way more than that so but in a triple net lease building you, you don't, I mean- Not a ton of work. They do every, the, the tenant does everything. They pay for everything. Right. So um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, so there, I think bottom line is like, there's so many different types of ways to go to your second or to get to your second property. I put down 25%. So I was living in my duplex that I bought with an FHA loan. I was house hacking. So I was saving a lot of money because my out of pocket was only a couple hundred bucks living there. And so I was able to save my- um, salary income, and I was able to afford a 25% down payment because you can only live in one house at a time, you know, and get a low down loan. So if you're buying a property with um, that, a non-owner occupied property, you you pretty much have to put 25, 20 to 25% down. Correct. Right. So I, that was where I was at. I was living in that property and I was like, I want to scale so I, I was able to save because again, I was not paying that much to live. And so I put 25% down. I still remember to this day, I have my numbers here. I bought a two family in Manchester, Connecticut. I paid $140,000, okay? I put 25% down, so it's 35,000. So my loan was 105,000. The property was bringing in um, about $2,000 a month. And at the time I actually didn't have $35,000. I just remember this the other day. I actually borrowed ten thousand dollars in a private loan through my colleagues. We're the same age. He gave me ten thousand dollars. He's like, "Hey, listen, like I bend your duplex in, in New Britain where you're living. Like I see what's going on. Like it makes sense." And you know, we're we're doing okay at this like W two job. So like we're in the finance industry. And he's like, "I'll give you ten thousand dollars. Give me ten percent interest. So a thousand dollars. So basically, I'm borrowing ten thousand dollars, and all I have to do is pay." a thousand dollars to quote unquote get this money that's crazy. i'm like shit yeah i'll do that so again i put thirty five thousand dollars down i only used twenty five thousand dollars my own capital which i did have at the time plus closing costs so i mean there was no points associated with that like private loan um and so i bought it for 140 i rented it out for about two thousand dollars a month my all in so principal interest taxes and insurance and that second balloon note I had to pay my guy. I paid him principal every month. So I paid him $416 a month. So my principal interest tax and insurance on the mortgage, the first position mortgage, was not about $950 plus the $416 I had to pay him. So I'm $1,366 a month and it's bringing in $2,000 a month. So I'm cash flowing $634. It's pretty good for my second property. Nine months later, I sold it for $164,000 and made $24,000 in nine months. Paid back my guy. I mean, it was like, an, it was a no-brainer. And that was an on-market property. On the MLS, on market, My, you know, the realtor at the time went out. We saw it, made the offer for a buck 40. I think it was listed at like 150. Made the offer for 140. It was, you know, it was below, a little bit below market rent at the time, but I got it up to $2,000. And, uh, yeah, that's how I got that second property. So I put 25% down. And then at that point, um, so I sold it. If I had known what I know now back then, I wish I had done a 1031 exchange because I could have deferred all the capital gains I would have now paid on the profit of that sale of that second property. So I sold it nine months later, did not do a 1031 exchange. And I bought a two family in Middletown, Connecticut, and was a foreclosure property. At this point, things were starting to get a little bit more expensive. I was I was honestly running out of money, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. It's like, okay, I bought the first one, I got the second one. Now it's like, how do I afford another one? So there's a couple different ways you can do it. You had seller finance, so as long as you have the down payment, like you didn't have any banks to right. worry about. You could borrow private money. 
Um, for me, it was what's talked about a lot is the, the Burr method. So it's like where you're buying a property, you're renovating it, you're renting it out, and you're refinancing it. And the idea is that you can pull out your initial down payment. So in this exact example, I my third property I bought in Middletown, Connecticut. It was a foreclosure, two family. I paid one eighteen five for it, so one hundred eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. My down payment, because this was a major renovation, but it was a big rehab project. It was a foreclosure. I needed a lot of rehab funds, and so I didn't have the money for the rehab funds. And so, as you know, you can get a, what's called like a, a hard money loan, which is where you'll they'll finance pretty much ninety to a, most times ninety to a hundred percent of that rehab portion. Right. Right. So you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. So I paid. So I bought it for one eighteen five. My renovation was thirty thousand dollars. That's what I needed to to bring it to like current standards. We'll say. So I bought it for one eighteen five. My down payment was only eleven thousand eight hundred fifty because with a hard money loan, some require twenty percent down. This particular one was going to give me a ninety percent loan to value. So I only had to put ten wow. percent down, and they were also going to fund a hundred percent of the rehab. That's amazing. So my down payment was eleven thousand eight hundred fifty. I just paid twenty four thousand on that last property. I'll have to pay capital gains on that twenty four thousand and my taxes that following year, but I still have money left over. So I reinvested it, bought this value add deal, Burr, you might say, so I can do that buy, renovate, rehab. So I, I put eleven thousand eight hundred fifty down. My loan amount was a hundred and six thousand, a hundred six thousand six hundred fifty to be exact. My rehab was thirty. So technically, I'm all in for one hundred and thirty six thousand six hundred fifty dollars. That's my all in if I paid cash for everything. I did the renovation of thirty thousand, and then I went out to a bank and I said, "I want a new loan on this property. I have this really high interest. I paid two points and ten percent for that that loan, that that hard money loan, which you don't want to stay in. A, you know, maybe you with the other loan, you stayed in the ten percent, but I don't want to stay in a ten percent no. loan. So. I went to a new bank and I said, I have this great property. It's fully renovated. I, I fully rented it out. It's bringing in really good rents. I want to refinance it. And they're so, okay, we're going to send out an appraiser. The appraiser went out and he says, based on everything you've done, based on sales comparison approach, you know, other um, sold properties, the income you're bringing in, we think it's worth $205,000. I said, okay. great. I bought it for 118. I put 30 into it. Fantastic. So, that bank was willing to give me a 75% loan to value. So they had 25% equity in that deal, right. which is pretty standard. And so it appraised at 205, 75% of that is 153,750, $153,750 is my new loan. I just told you I was all in for 136,000. So I take that 153, that new loan, I pay off that high interest loan. Right. And now I have a nice clean 30 year mortgage with this new bank for $153,000. And oh, by the way, I rented both units out for $1,500 each. $1,500 each? $1,500 each. I wow. still have that property today. How many bedrooms? Three bedrooms each per year. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. So it's bringing in $3,000 a month. And my my loan, which I've owned it for a couple of years now, is for was for $153,000. So that's almost a, the 2% rule, you'd say. That's which amazing. Is like, that's really good numbers. Yeah. That's solid. So, um, yeah, that was a win. So that's, that's a great example of how you can scale. So, so the, the important part of that, not to get sidetracked, is that the reason why this, the value add deals are so important, especially when you're just starting out is because I can recoup my money. So when I got that new loan of 153,000, I paid off that old loan of 136,000. The difference there is about a little less than $20,000 after closing costs. I got all that money back out. All that initial eleven thousand eight hundred fifty I put down, got I got back. And oh, by the way, I have a, a fully rented, beautiful, performing two family with none of my own capital in it. You paid nothing. I for paid eleven thousand eight hundred fifty dollars, and I got it back. Wow, that's like infinite. I'm not a, a huge math guy, but like that's got to pretty, be a pretty good return, right? Absolutely. So it's just like that's just another way, like when you're when you're just starting off, like in your first, second, and third, like buy that value add deal, put in that sweat equity. Like it was stressful. Right? I'm paying a ten percent interest loan. I don't have the money to pay this off. I, right. I what if it doesn't appraise? Then what? Then what do you do? You yeah. know. So there's some risk. There is some risk, but you know, I could have. I didn't have the thirty thousand dollars in rehab money, so 
it's just another way. So seller finance, finding a value add, you know, deal, all different types of, you know, ways to, to kind of scale your portfolio without having, you know, bokus of money. You, like in your example, like are not going to own that deal. Like you're splitting it 50, 50. Yeah, whatever. Maybe you, you own 25, but they own 75 because they put up all the money. Like you don't own that home deal, that whole deal. Right. So that's just something to consider when you're, yeah. when you're partnering. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, for us, like I, I remember when I first started investing, I was like, I'll, I never need a partner. Like, not that I know it all and I certainly don't, but like, I, I never think I needed a partner. And then obviously like you came around and I was like, okay, like I've had a couple deals under my belt. Right. This is sweet. I have hundred percent equity in all these deals. However, I'm out of money. And like, I could keep doing the Burr method and, and the finding the value add deals, or I could leverage another like like-minded individual and we can leverage our assets together and right. then scale that way. So like, you know, our portfolio today, I could never have achieved right. without the help of you. Right. Not so, only your money, but like your knowledge as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate not, I'm not just, I appreciate I'm that. not just a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, no, that's good. I mean, that's really interesting because like my third property, I did the exact same thing you did. I know like future episode, we're going to get into the Burr strategy. Yeah. I really want to dive deep into the, the whole Burr method because I think it's, it is so important to real estate investing and burr's been kind of like coined by bigger pockets which it's great i mean they're they're a great resource but like the whole like cash out refinance adding mm -hmm. value through construction or just management maybe you acquired a property that like looks great it's just like mismanaged but like you're adding value some way shape or right. form and you're increasing the value of that property enough where you can then pull out the equity i.e your down in part of your down payment we talk to so many people like investors whether they're like new investors experienced or not. And like, whenever I get asked what is like the most important or like biggest piece of advice you can give someone, at least for people that are starting out, it's find a way to recycle your money. Yeah. You have to. Because if you buy, if you continue to buy turnkey properties, you like you, like in your example, like your money is going to be stuck. Yep. It's going to be stuck in this property. It's going to be stuck in the next one. If you can afford it, like if you don't have a way to get it out, like you're not scaling. Yeah. Bought that first one at market price, had no equity in it, put down three and a half percent, literally no equity. Bought the second one, put 25% down. I have 25% equity, but I bought it at market rate. Right. The third one is where I bought, you know, I kind of learned that model, value add, sweat equity, management, construction, all that good stuff. And I was able to in increase the value through rehabbing it. Right. And pull out that initial down payment. Now I can go to that fourth property and and do it all over again. And maybe just on a larger scale. Because right. if you do it on a two or three family, like why can't you do it on a 10, 12, 20 unit portfolio or a building? Absolutely. It's the same process. It's the same it's just process. Just bigger numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's where maybe a partner makes sense is like, okay, you know, I, I pulled out my money on this one. I don't want to sell it, but I, you know, I have some capital to reinvest. But I don't have all of it. So like where's that where's that missing piece? Yeah. And you're also leveraging time too, right? Sure. Like I do things that, you know, maybe you don't have time for, like working with a property manager, like calling yeah. the utility company to argue a bit. Like all these random things that come up, like it's a lot for one person, even with a property manager. So like when you do partner with someone, you're you're leveraging their time too. I think the most important thing for at least for me is just like if you have found yourself a good deal. Like, do whatever it takes to make it happen. Yeah. Get a hundred thousand dollars. I got a hundred thousand dollar loan for at ten percent, and That's like wild. I paid this company ten percent to do it. I wrote them a check for it. like well, that is crazy. But like at the end of the day, it cash flowed well, right? Like it was a great property in a great location. And years later, I sold it, paid off that loan, made a couple bucks. Like it all like worked out, and you know. I was just starting out then, but like, at least I was confident that like numbers make sense. Property's in a good location. I know the area and I know the location. I know the business model, which was rent by the room. Like, yes, I'm going to take out this hundred thousand dollar loan. Yes. It's 10%. Yes. I'm paying these people 10%. <laughs> and, but at the end of the day, it makes sense. Like you can't, you, got be, into it. you can't beat yourself up over like some of the, some of the costs, because at the end of the day, if you're going to be benefiting it, it's just worth the it. cost of doing business. It's the cost of doing business. Yeah. So for now, that was awesome. We'll be here next week. And just remember, sky's the limit. Dive deep and invest in how you want to live. See you next time. See you.